Good morning, traders. It is Tuesday, June 25th. Taking a look at the charts, let's start off with the GDXJ, the, the gold miners. And more or less, uh, the gold miners, whether they're the GDX, GDXJ, or the SIL, um, uh, silver miners, and any of the combination of the leveraged uh, ETFs, they pretty much all move together and generally give signals at the same time. So um, when I talk about uh, gold, it also refers to silver. They typically work together, although silver's got some disconnect, which is normal, and I actually like it. It's a it's a it's a bullish sign. It means um, everyone's going into the safe havens, not the risk on other metals like silver yet. Lots of opportunity for silver down the road. But let's just take a look at um, more or less the market sentiment of uh, traders, investors, uh, potentially. Uh, yourself and and just kind of get a gauge of where the market is now overall if we take a look at GDXJ this is our trend analysis chart red and we're looking for short sell signals and, and quick drops in the market uh, when they go orange that means we're in a trend reversal green is when we've got uh, an uptrend and, and we've got these oversold buy signals uh, more or less where we've gone with uh, precious metals at this point or the gold miners is we've we've, we've flipped to an uptrend the market has screamed to the upside and uh, we took some money off. We closed out our position right over here and I'm getting a lot of flack or not a lot, but getting some flack from subscribers saying we got a way too early. Metals are going to the moon. Uh, everyone is screaming metals, which to me is exactly what happened over here. We got out of our gold miners here. We got in right over here when we're seeing a significant bottom get put into place. We, we played this, we got out, I got a ton of flack. We don't get in at the very bottom, we don't get out at the very top, we're looking for the safe play in between. We got in uh, down over here, and we got out up here. And of course, you can see what happened a couple days later, we saw a blow off top in the market, put in a top, and then it got real volatile, broke down and sold off and gave us another opportunity. Well, this is where we are now. We're up near this top. We're getting a huge move. Everyone's screaming about buying metals. No one wants to sell their positions. Um, this is the sign that things are going to get choppy and we should see things pull back. Now, keep in mind, you never know which rally is going to be the one that breaks out into the full-fledged bull market. So if we just zoom back here, let's go to the monthly chart. We do have a breakout. Uh, in terms of short-term price action. If we look at the big picture of metals, we are breaking above some of these short-term highs or flirting with these levels. This is a key level on the monthly chart where the market could, could roll over very easily and sell off. You carry this across, this is a very significant uh, resistance level we're under. There's lots of little resistance levels packed above this. Uh, through all these areas so there's going to be a, still a lot of struggle here but everyone is is thinking that you know next stop is way up here for the gold miners and that's just not the way it works the uh, the major market trend here the the major bull market really will be kind of confirmed when this whole basing formation comes out and it starts to break some of these these standout significant highs uh, from the past. That's when the new full out bull market is in place. But everyone seems to be in position already and loading up, adding more. And that to me says we could see a pretty sharp pullback still in the short term uh, in the markets. Now, let's go back to the daily chart real quick. And uh, more or less, let's let's go over to the US dollar index. Here is the dollar index. And more or less, we're, we've had this nice two, uh, ABC correction. We've been in this uptrend. We've got a nice uh, A, let me draw on the chart here, A, B, C correction. I drew Fibonacci extensions on, on another chart. More or less, we've had the sell-off to this bounce up and to this downside here. More or less, we've hit that 100% Fibonacci uh, downside target for the dollar. It looks oversold. We got big volume here. Usually big volume indicates we're in a bottom, just like over here where we dropped off. We saw a big uh, volume here, and then it had a nice bounce. If the dollar bounces off this Fib level, who knows how big the bounce will be. We could go back up towards this 99-100 level, which I think is um, a little far-fetched, but we could very easily see a bounce up into this 96.50 area, maybe even 97, that will create that pullback in precious metals and miners that no one seems to be worried about. 
So that's kind of where we are in the grand scheme of things with the precious metals. And I talked about this in, in our uh, Monday morning yesterday video that this was going to be an emotional week, meaning those who trade on emotions who are uh, permables in gold and they see these, these prices rocket up in miners, uh, they are going to uh, be screaming and excited. And then when we do get a sharp pullback, it's going to be, you know, crazy emotion, roller, roller coaster ride probably for the next few weeks. So uh, we could see a breakout and a huge run here, but you got to take money where uh, resistance is. We can always re-enter any position. It costs a dollar, five dollars to enter a new trade to get back in. Um, so there's no need to panic and worry if you miss out on three, four, five, eight percent, even 10 percent of a move. We are in the infancy stage of potentially a bull market. And um, don't get all caught up. Price is exhausted. It's into resistance. Everyone's buying it and owning it. It's usually the time when the market pulls back and has some correction. Look at the gap on this chart. Gaps tend to get filled. So keep in mind these gold miners, what goes straight up a lot of times can come straight back down. So be very aware of what's going on here. All right. So let's take a look at the rest of the market. Let's go to the SP 500. SP 500, similar type of price action, daily chart, huge V-shaped recovery, poking to nominal new highs. And um, I talked about this actually in an article uh, last. If you take a look at this chart, there's a lot on here. You kind of need a few minutes to process it. But long story short, the SP 500 in the back, we've got uh, the SP 500 poked to a nominal new high. Now, this is in 2007, 2008. This is the last bull market top. We saw uh, the gold market rallied up, consolidated for a while, and then started to break out of these previous highs and started to outperform the rest of the equities market. Market had a little pop. Uh, gold miners started to take off. Gold miners uh, continued to push higher while the overall indexes in the background continued to crumble and start to break down below these significant um, support levels on the chart. There's a, a bunch of different levels across here. And, uh, and then eventually went into a full out bear market, which sucks pretty much all stocks down, especially when there's forced liquidation margin calls. Miners got hit. They fell about on average 64% before they put in a bottom to go up to the 2011 tops. And they bottomed before the overall stock market. But we're coming into that same type of price action. Just take a look at the updated chart. This is 2019. This is right now. Here we are with... The stock market poking to a nominal new high again. We've got this huge rally and multi-year uh, consolidation in miners. They're just starting to break out, breaking above this falling trend line. And uh, we could very easily see the equities market start to struggle here while the gold miners pick up speed and start to uh, outperform. But when there's forced liquidation eventually in a bear market, we will see gold miners and get uh, pulled down short term, they will be bottom before the stock market. But there, there's, there's still potential for a lot of upside here. But when the time comes, we may be needing to move out of them, hold uh, and play even inverse plays on the market, and then we reload with the precious metals market uh, later uh, once they've actually bottomed out. So we're into this phase here. This, this last three, six, nine months here where the stock market is going to start to struggle. This is the weekly chart, keep in mind. So we've got several months here where uh, miners could perform very well, but uh, got to be aware of a major sell-off down the road. Uh, let's take a look over at energies real quick. Crude oil put in that nice double bottom and really a one-day pop up to uh, upside target resistance. It really didn't give much of a, a chance to get in there. It's now struggling up at uh, under this uh, uh, resistance area. And more or less, we'll see where this goes. Overall, uh, I think it could continue to consolidate a bit, but more or less the upside target, it could still reach 62 or so a barrel if it can extend. We'll see if it pulls back and forms some type of entry point on our uh, trend analysis chart. You can see here the trend uh, went from a nice uptrend in crude, it went neutral to orange, and then in a bunch of uh, short signals. Uh, this is for very short term trading, but more or less we're, we're curving up here and we're about a day or two away from the trend actually starting to turn up the momentum. And uh, if this is a high momentum move, we are gonna see crude uh, rally to here, this tight little consolidation, 
and if this is as high momentum as it, it looks like it might be, it could actually pop very quickly to that 62, potentially 63 area um, going forward. You could take a conservative target from there to this high and just flip that distance to the upside around 62. You could go down from these lows to this consolidation and then carry that forward. It'd be somewhere 63, 64 to the upside. So we'll see where that goes, but overall it's still technically in a downtrend. It could be sold here very quickly. We could see it pull back, but it uh, is on the verge of reversing. Looking over at natural gas, natural gas put in uh, looks like what could be a washout low in the market, at least a short term temporary, temporary or low, uh, more or less. Um, we got into this washout, a little tongue tied this morning. Uh, we've got this washout low here, big reversal in the market yesterday, and uh, we'll see if it can start to get some traction. We might just see something like this where it forms another bear flag. Um, we still have a downside target of potentially two, so we might see this market continue to consolidate up, uh, potentially struggle up here. But uh, overall, we're still looking for potential lower prices. But at this point, it has shown a reversal, and I think we could start to see it consolidate for a little while going to the upside. Uh, pull up a chart of gold just so you can see where gold is trading this morning. Uh, more or less, we've gone, uh, we're, we're stretching up to this blue line, this green line. These are significant uh, uh, targets in the market. 1450 was our kind of our max upside target for gold. If we were to go back and take the most extreme Fibonacci reading on here, we can go to a Fibonacci target. We go from, um, I've already got it on here, but let me draw it, uh, draw over here. More or less, we've got, where's the end of that chart? I'll just redraw it. So if we take a look at gold, throw Fibonacci extension, we go from this extreme low to the rally high to the pullback here and carry it forward. This gives us that four, uh, 1450 target we talked about months and months ago that uh, uh, once it started to pull back here, uh, we talk, and we started to see the price reverse where we got long in metals uh, and, and have ridden it up right up to this 1400 and change. Uh, more or less, as soon as we saw this, we said, okay, this is where it uh, looks like we are headed as the 1450 target. We're pretty darn close. We got up to 1444, give or take five or 10 bucks. It's uh, uh, pretty, pretty darn close to that target. We still might flush out and continue to spike up. There's a lot of momentum here. There's no doubt everyone's piling in, but that's typically means we're right near the end of the move. The biggest moves in the market tend to be right near the end of a move. You get to see the strongest move and then a reversal. Same with sell-offs in the market. You see some of the strongest moves before it reverses and shakes out. So you got to be aware when things go parabolic straight up or down, usually they reverse. Anyway, sorry, videos dragged out a little longer than normal this morning. Uh, more or less, uh, continue to watch the markets. We're looking for some new setups. Things are starting to evolve. Small caps and transport sectors definitely under pressure. They're actually starting to pull back into very close to some uh, oversold territory. Let's just look at the uh, zoom in on the chart of the Russell 2000. More or less, it's gone into a green trend. It's starting to get oversold. Down this green hashtag is going to be an area where we start to get lime green bars indicating it is uh, technically oversold. Uh, we got the 20 day moving average here starting to slope up. And uh, we could end up getting a, a potential buy entry for a bounce in the my, uh, sorry, the the inter the market, the small caps. Uh, but we'll have to see how that lives. If it's just a short-lived bounce, or if it's going to have legs and continue to go higher. But it's interesting that yesterday small caps and take a look at the transport sector, the IYT. Uh, more or less, we're seeing the IYT pull back as well, and it's been really underperforming quite a bit. Uh, so we'll have to just get a gauge on what type of bounce we see in the equities market over the next few sessions. Anyways, that's it for now. Talk to you in a little bit. Bye-bye.